in Genesis chapter 26, very first verse, the, the word of God begins. Now there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. So this is another famine. Abraham experienced one. There's one now again. And Isaac went to Gerar to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and give them to your offspring all these lands. In your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. We see here God's God promising Isaac some things. There's a famine. There's a time of need. And in the midst of it, God reiterates his promise. Now, this is the first time that we see God directly talking to Isaac and saying, Hey, I'm going to give you the blessings I promised to your father, Abraham. Nations will come from you. Your, your descendants will multiply. They're you know, going to be strong. They're going to be a blessing to the entire earth. I mean, imagine hearing these things from the Lord. That's amazing. It's the first time Isaac hears this, and it's in a time of need when there's a famine. Now, Ab now, what Isaac did is he goes to Gerar. This is where God directs him. We see this here. Do not go down to Egypt. That is what Abraham did when famine happened the first time. He went down to Egypt, and he got in trouble. But we do see that Isaac obeys. He goes to Gerar, which is Abimelech, which is the king of the Philistines. And this was a character that Abraham had a run in. With, If you remember, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of that army, came and made a treaty with Abraham because Abraham was so powerful they didn't want him to wipe them out. And also, Abimelech was the king where Abraham also went for a while and had another lying episode about Sarah. Saying, well, Sarah's my sister, because he was afraid, because he was, she was so not dead beautiful, he was afraid that he was going to be killed because of his wife, just so they could have her. And he lied, just like he did down in Egypt. Now, Ab now Isaac is obedient and does not go to Egypt. He goes to Gerar. He's going to the same place that Abraham went. And remember, this is in a time of his need. God reiterates his promise to him. In the middle of our times of need, we need to remember God's promises. And sometimes it is in the middle of our time of need that God speaks most clearly and most powerfully. When things are going good, it's not a good thing. But honestly, as humans, when things are going good, we usually don't value God as much. We don't value God's word as much. But when you are desperate, when your soul is crying out and dry, a word from the Lord is like a, a well, like a, an oasis, a, a well of water in the middle of a desert. You have a lot more value. Now, in our spiritual life, as we mature, we are... I think more and more often brought to the place of, in a sense, experiencing more dryness. The, the closer you grow to Jesus, the more you see your sin and your unworthiness and your complete dependency on God, and you cry out to Him more and more. Instead of being self-sufficient with Jesus on the side, you become more and more God-dependent for everything. It's in the middle of a time of need that God speaks to Isaac. I think that's a significant point. It's also very interesting, based on just observing the context, he goes to the same place that his father went, the same king. Now remember, these are the Philistines. Abraham had lied to them, and then Abraham had made a covenant with them. You can go back and read about all those details. 
And I know I'm going to kind of be telling you some things ahead of time, but the same things are going to happen with Isaac just shortly on in our next few episodes. Father, I pray that you would ingrain your word into our hearts. Help us, Lord, when we are in the middle of a famine, whether actually naturally in this world or spiritually. Father, help us to have our ears attuned to you and to remember your promises because your word is our life. We don't live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Make our souls desperate, Lord, that we would hear you. And may we obey you, not going to Egypt, the world, in the middle of our time of need and famine. But Father, may we come to you and may we go where you direct us. In Jesus' name, I pray that these lessons be ingrained in our souls.